Hi guys, my name's Mary, and we are here with Neely and Emmy, and we are going to talk yogi squat. So, yogi squat, do you guys, ha can you get your heels down with some quality? Okay, the difference between squats. We have western squat, which is really bad for your knee. Okay, some of you are going to argue with me about this, but I'm going to say this puts undue pressure on your knees in my experience of 23 years. Okay? This is called a um, Western squat because this is how people who sit in chairs all the time because their hip flexors are so tight, this is how they have to squat because they can't root their heels. Tight hip flexors are not fun, right? So east, um, Eastern squat, and this is the traditional squat, is really dropping the heels down. It's almost as though I describe having a grape behind your calf muscle and thigh and you're trying to squeeze it. So most people are like trying to pull up out of it, which is actually fighting the posture in itself because they can't get their heels down. They don't feel rooted, so they feel like they're gonna fall back on their ass every time. Yes, I said ass. <laughs> you know, that, that's the feeling. Is that not the feeling you have? You feel like you're just gonna flop back. So, in this position, now if I'm dropping into yogi squat and stuff, sometimes people don't have, uh, you know, I'm just getting down there and letting you get your hips out, but most time I like stick you in yogi squat. I'm like, okay, they have had enough right now, so <laughs> you're going into yogi squat, right? So, to get your heels down, you can either use wedges, we, you can use a large wedge like this one, um, and this one is for people who really can't get their heels down, at, you know, and it's really difficult for them. And then, um, and then you could use something like a half round or something. This, um, you can get a little arch support in this one too. This one, I would say, strengthens your feet more. This one's probably more relaxing. <laughs> so I'll let you guys switch off. How about that? Um, so what we're looking for in yogi squat, typically, is heels planted down, and one of the rules that we, rules, one of the guidelines that we try to do in yoga is that the gap between your second and third toe and your knees and heels are all at 12 o'clock, right? So this is the deal. Why do I say the gap between your second and third toe? Have you ever seen some people's big toes? They are taking a complete turn into everybody else, right? Yeah, you've seen that, right? So generally, the gap between the second and third toe will line up with the center of your foot, right? And so where that might come, up, come away from traditional teaching, traditionally, we didn't wear high heels and we didn't sit in chairs all day. And so we didn't have to like, formulate around like feet that didn't have arches and necks that were head forward. So, you know, we've had to modify how we talk about it. I do want to show one thing with Neely right here. Have you ever broke your ankle or sprained it? Um, I've had a lot of injuries. A lot of, I can tell. So one of the things that, so you can see, one of the things that happens for a flat foot, it's not necessarily the arch. It's that the shin spins in. So. Let's look at our feet and let those shins drop in. Literally spin your shins inward and you'll see how your feet flatten out. So what happens is, is that people tend to roll to the outside of the feet to activate an imaginary arch rather than pushing down and letting those shins line up their arch, which will be a kind of a thing that you're gonna do in yogi squat because when I drop down, I'm looking for the shins to not let the, the arches collapse in like this, which makes the knees collapse in, which overloads the back, right? Yet another reason to have our heels down. So let's try this. So when we come into yogi squat, you think about it, your feet are average shoulder distance apart. So generally it's about the width of your mat and then your toes will turn out to the edge. What I'm looking for is however far out your feet are, which should be like one and 11, maybe 10 and two, Nine and three is not what your knees do. That's too much, even in goddess pose, unless you can do double split, right? Unless you can do double split, then I'll let you do that, right? Otherwise, one and 11, 10 and two, right? And so when I drop down, I want these to be underneath 
my heel. So these are gonna kinda go out to a 10 and two as well. So I'm gonna put my heels down, and so when I drop, and so you'll angle your wedges just like that. So here, this is, this one's super relaxing because I can just kinda puddle, so make sure you don't completely puddle, right? How's that feel comparative to another yogi squat? Amazing. I feel so much more supported. Can you let your tailbone grow heavy? I used to have an instructor that would say, imagine your tailbone was sinking in the mud. I, I can get a lot further back because if I do it without it, I, I can't get, this is what I'm at. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't feel supported and you feel like you're struggling and the muscle won't open up if you struggle. Right, 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 right. And so what ends up happening is the muscles you're trying to actually stretch stay activated. It's another thing that happens when people go into squats because they have hip limitation or they're scared to really drop down in that chair, only their quadriceps are working. And so their quadriceps are screaming because it's the only muscle working and holding on. And when you can get down to that position that you can like fire up everything, man, get some help. It's not easy, right? Recruit as many muscles as you can. So this is an easy thing to do for your squats. One of the things that I will say is ankle mobility. So I like the wedges the best for this because she will be eventually be able to come down that wedge until she's flat on the floor. Whereas this one, there's not as much angle. It's really restorative, right? Yeah, try that one. You're gonna be like, oh, the support. You put your arch up on it. Put your, oh yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> Right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can really push your heels down in it. And this works for toe squats too, except you just put the blocks beside each other. Okay. Yeah, so toe squat is um, really good for you. Most people don't do it because, you know, they're in shoes or Chinese foot binding, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> right? And so try toe balance, guys. So feet are together, stand up. Um, try it without the assistance. Feet are, big toes are together. You're gonna bend your knees forward and sit down onto your heels. What you wanna do is sit in the knees as far forward as you can so that the thighs are parallel. See, she's, her, her hip flexors, because she rides horses, keeps her high. And so having, grab one of those rounds and put it behind your heels. Now do toe balance, right? And so now you could even load up for your side crow if you wanted because you can feel that depth in there, right? Here you go, yay! Wonderful. So toe, toe balance and yogi squat, it's really good. So let me say that the main reason that uh, older people have a hard time getting up and out of chairs is ankle mobility. What happens is, is they can't get their feet far enough back with ankle mobility to come up out of that chair. So foot health and ankle mobility, toe squat, yogi squat, it's the thing, especially if you sit in chairs all day. Bye guys, hope that helps. Bye.